And welcome, Year 10s, to this, your next session on um, crime and punishment. Uh, in particular, our series, we're looking at crime and punishment from the 1900s onwards. Um, today, we're going to be looking at law enforcement from 19 uh, onwards, uh, 100 onwards up until the present. So these are our learning objectives today to know and understand about changes and developments in policing uh, from 1900 onwards, to understand the impact of those changes, particularly the impact that science and technology have made, uh, to know about the role of communities in enforcing law, okay, and, and what have you. So this is, um, as it was last session, this is um, at least two lessons worth of work. There are two lessons here. Okay, I'm, I'm working hard to make sure you're getting at least two lessons a week. Okay, um, to keep you uh, bang up to date with your, with your, with your learning. So at some stage during the course of this, um, this lesson, yeah, you want to stop about halfway through, go away, make sure you've done the work and then come back another day or pick it up a little bit later. So just to uh, kickstart the whole business off, here is um, a brief YouTube video showing the role of law enforcement up in, until the modern day police force. Okay, by, we, by all means pause this um, and go away, watch this video and then come back when you're ready. So developments in policing. Um, this lesson follows the uh, the um, uh, the the textbook quite closely, so it's well worth having that with you alongside you, either an electronic copy or a physical copy. Okay, um, so it's going to regularly refer to various things, and I've taken information from the textbook to help us learn as well during the course of this lesson. So, um, in the nineteen hundreds. Okay, every area, by, well, by sort of 1900, every area had its own police force. Okay, so that initial reluctance to have a standing police force was, was gone. Okay, thank you to Peel and his reforms. Um, and so we start to see, you know, every um, area of Britain, roughly by counties, roughly. Okay. Um, and everyone started to have its own police forces. So there were initially, okay, 200 separate forces. They had no central records at all on crime or criminals, very rarely shared information or worked together. Um, most police officers at that time, it was essentially walking their beat out on patrol, okay? Uh, they travelled on foot with a whistle or, you know, their ratchet or what have you. Yeah, wearing their top hat and tails and what have you with their truncheon. And it was all very much uh, beat bobbying. Yeah, as it kind of sort of had, had been invented to. And then we start to see um, from round about the 1900s, some developments taking place. So from the 1920s, women were allowed in. We start to see women being invited to take a part of policing. Um, so the um, in 1947, the police training college was set up. Uh, essentially, before then, before there was no kind of proper official police training, you were just expected to, to wing it. Yeah, from day one, you're learning on the job, mate. OK, but from 1947, we start to see the police training college actually taking an active involvement in training police officers. Um, so other developments included, and we look over here, various developments in science and technology, fingerprinting, which is now a serious mainstay of, um, uh, of policing. And when we come to look at um, our case study on Whitechapel, uh, you'll know what one of the issues that they had is they didn't have fingerprinting. They didn't have forensics back then. So that made a, a big issue when it came to actually catching the man involved in the Ripper murders. But from 1901, the fingerprint branch branch was set up. 
at New Scotland Yard, and a national fingerprint system essentially was uh, created. Different blood types was discovered in 1901. That was very useful. Uh, remember, this is way before the days of DNA. Then microscopes made it very useful. Uh, photography, 1909 police bicycles, 1930s police cars, uh, the emergency telephone number, the 1960s and Met Police first used computers, 1980s, the police national database is, is launched, okay, and now all of a sudden the, the various different forces could actually pull and share information. Um, 1988, the first use of DNA, and 1995, the National Automatic Fingerprint System was set up. So we see uh, slowly but surely science and technology uh, developing uh, the police force's way of, inf of catching and tracking down crime. And we see along with that various departments and roles within policing starting to be set up. And we're going to be looking at a couple during the course of the lesson today. Brief activity before we go on any further. So look at this table here. All right. And take some time. Um, find three examples of 21st century, century technology cutting down on the number of police needed compared to 1900s. And how could these technologies impact on your individual freedoms? OK, so answer these two questions. And if you've got anybody at home to actually talk to about this, compare it uh, and, you know, talk to them, discuss it with them. Or maybe you might want to consider perhaps setting up like a Zoom chat with one of your colleagues within the actual class. OK, so pause the video here and uh, then come back later once you've actually completed these activities. So specialisation in police roles. We see 1971, the bomb squad set up. OK. Um, and in 2001, the National High Tech Crime Unit is set up, um, which uh, is set up to tackle things like online crime, um, credit, hacking, fraud, viruses, and other things like that. OK. Um, we see the fraud squad set up in London in 1946 and then developing later on to become the, or as we know it today, the specialist organised and economic crime squad. Um, then we start to see as well 1971 as a direct result of the Misuse of Drugs Act, we see the various drug units being set up. So the drug units were set up to, to do things like um, disrupt criminal activities and organisations, monitor known drug users, prevent the further spread and use of drugs. OK, and then in 2013, the National Crime Agency then started tra tackling drug trafficking in and out of the UK, large scale drug scale drug production within the UK, using things like intelligence and, uh, and data on known criminals. So nowadays, all local police forces have special squads to help them deal with uh, their drug dealers in their various areas. And these squads aim to try and disrupt um, the trade and raids on, on buildings where dealers and supply drugs. Uh, one of the hot topics at the moment is, is county lines, okay, uh, essentially, uh, Recently, various drug dealers have sought to try and kind of circumvent these special drug units by kind of dealing across counties and using young people to deal across counties and, and what have you um, to, with some limited success. So that is at the moment, county lines is kind of one of the, the hot things that police are working hard on. So a couple of tasks I'd like you um, to actually do this kind of um, attitude towards drugs in the UK, uh, the kind of the UK war on drugs that's been ongoing since the 1970s. Uh, some people have argued that it doesn't work and that uh, 
drug crime is as big an issue in the UK now as it has always been. OK, um, do you do you agree with this or not? What evidence can you find um, out there that it isn't working? And more importantly, what alternatives could be taken? OK, so. Um, as is the case, and I mentioned this last session, whenever doing any research with regards to any of these um, particular tasks, be careful. Yeah, take care. Be careful what you're searching for on the Internet. Um, sometimes you can let yourself in a bit of hot water. So uh, every police force around the country every year normally has a yearly initiative. I can remember a long time ago when I was a police officer, uh, it, burglary yeah, it was one of the big issues. In particular, we were looking at um, essentially criminals who were breaking into houses to steal car keys so that they could actually steal the car. OK, that was one thing we were working hard on back on, way, way, way back then. So go away, have a look at Thames Valley's crime initiative, try and find out what their initiative is for this year pause this video and then come back when you're ready. So, dogs and terrorism, dog units. Okay, in 1938, um, the, the first ever specially trained police dogs were used in South London and they were Labradors, okay? And they were used to accompany police officers out on patrol uh, as they patrolled their local beat. Um, and in 1946, the Metropolitan Police sets up its own special dog section. By the time the 1950s roll around, um, most police forces up and down the country have their own dog units. And dogs are used to do things like sniff out drugs, find explosives, track and catch criminals, uh, search for missing people or search for missing items. Um, and just to strengthen police presence at uh, an events, yeah, you know, um, these furry missiles, as they're often referred to as, okay, um, big, strong, fit, healthy dog, uh, you know, if he's barking and looking quite cross at you, you might think twice about having a go at the police officer. Um, every police force today has its own special branch. Now, special branch is essentially works alongside MI5 in combating terrorism. Yeah, using surveillance up and down the country to try and detect and prevent terrorism. Uh, people, particularly homegrown terrorists, people who, you know, they're not moving into this country, but, but actually were born here. OK. Uh, and what have you. And there's the various things, the prevent strategy and all sorts are tied in with that. OK, so um, this is the second lesson. Yeah. So this is the end of our first lesson, if you like. So if you wanted to take a break here uh, and, and make sure you've got uh, some of your work and notes on this. OK, now is a good time to do and then come back to this the second session um, in, um, in these two lessons. So the second session is going to be focused on policing in the community, OK, and how the police seeks to work with the community in combating crime today. So um, in the 21st century, there's very much a focus on crime prevention, OK, and we've got some key terms here, OK, pause this video, write down these key terms, make sure you've made a note of them. OK, and then when you've done that, come back and carry on working through our slides. So 21st century focus on crime prevention is about educating people within the local community, making connections with people, building links. Yeah, they, so they found at the end of the 1990s, early thousands, OK, that one of the one of the things that made um, Peelers Bobbies quite successful is that that and you think back to Peel's uh, various um, uh, points that he set up the early police force on was that if he 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 argued Peel argued you think all the way back that a police officer's job was dependent upon his relationship with his or hers or well, actually his at a time local community. 
And so we saw back in the sort of the noughties, this kind of um, new uh, uh, initiative to go back to work in the community, to get people, you know, out of the cars, yeah, where they were whizzing around and not really paying attention to what was going on, back on the bicycles, back on the beat, back on foot. But they found that essentially there wasn't really enough police officers um, to be able to do this. Yeah, and in fact, actually, police officers are quite expensive and quite highly paid specialist members um, of the community today. So they started to build up various new initiatives. So these were the police community support officers whose job essentially was to go out and forge those links and communities, take policing back to the foot, okay, wandering around parks, wandering around towns, and essentially getting out, getting a uniform, talking to people. And then the other one was the Neighbourhood Watch. Now, the Neighbourhood Watch, uh, since it was set up back in the 1980s, and initially came under quite a lot of criticism and a lot of fire. OK, uh, if you have a look on page 118, for example, yeah, the public, there was quite a mixed reception. It was initially quite, um, quite negative. People sort of thought it was quite funny. It was a bit of a, uh, considered to be quite a joke at the time. So I'd like you to spend um, some time doing some research work on the Neighbourhood Watch. You're going to be looking at the um, pages 116 to essentially 118, okay, and find out what the aims of the Neighbourhood Watch are and what its origins, make some appropriate notes on that. Then when you've done that, okay, look at sources E and F, okay, on page 107. Uh, this is source E here, so that should be quite helpful. And source F is there as well in case you needed it. So look at these two sources and answer this question here. How useful are they in telling us the purpose of the Neighbourhood Watch, what the, the, the Neighbourhood Watch was? Don't forget to remember, answer the question. Yeah, you need to, yes, you do need to explore what the sources are telling us, but you also need to say how useful are they in telling us a purpose, yeah? Is there any bias at all in any way? Okay, finally, yeah, using page 118, what the, what were or what are the public attitudes towards Neighbourhood Watch? Um, do a little bit of research out today, maybe perhaps talk to your parents about what they thought of the Neighbourhood Watch when it was first set up or any um, older members of your family that you can contact. Um, don't go wandering the streets speaking to people about it because we are supposed to be in lockdown, but if anybody you know, um, uh, from your parents' generation, you can talk to them about what they thought the Neighbourhood Watch was like when it's first set up. Perhaps do some research online. Um, is there any evidence you can find today to support the public attitudes towards Neighbourhood Watch, in particular what it was like when it was first set up? And what is it like now? What do people think of the Neighbourhood Watch now? Okay, pause if you need to, guys. So, activities. Looking at these sources, these two sources here, uh, complete these two activities on this page. Yeah. And then there's a four mark exam style question. All right. Remember, mark a minute, guys and girls, mark a minute. This shouldn't take you more than about four or five minutes to complete. And there's an exam tip here as well to help you do that. Pause here, go away, do the activities, come back. Finally, in summary, there were quite important developments in modern, pol modern policing um, during the, the 20th century. If you can think that the 19th century was important because essentially it was the foundation of policing, yeah, uh, and quite a, a massive development from the kind of the hue and cry and community responsibility and thief catchers and all the kind of the ad hoc, outmoded, outdated methods of policing that did used to exist, okay, yeah, just as that 19th century was a big leap forward from that, the 20th century has been just as big a leap forward as well, yeah, so important developments, 
of, in modern policing have used things like science, technology, and it's been more about crime prevention and coordination and cooperation, yeah, than it, it was initially. Um, we also saw in the 20th century an increasing specialization in police forces with special development divisions set up, better training, but also in reaction to the fact that policemen became more specialized, this kind of took them away from their beat. It kind of took them away from the communities. So that there had to then be, yeah, kind of a, and a new initiative as well, taking policing back to the community through things like PCSOs and Neighborhood Watch. Okay, so um, some strength and challenge checkpoint questions here. Pause here, answer these questions, come back. And finally, a, a plenary task to round off this entire topic. Okay, uh, use pages 115 to 116 of the textbooks. Go back and read them again if you haven't done them already. Uh, create a spider diagram or a series of notes, however, is easiest for you to work. Uh, specialization of police forces since 1900s. Okay, you could do it perhaps as a, a, um, a timeline. That would actually work quite well as well. It'd probably work better than a, a spider diagram. So it's up to you. And it needs to include the following of this information here. Okay, right. Well, um, this is the end of the session um, for now. Uh, thanks very much for listening. I hope you've got a lot out of it and look forward to uh, more on 20th century policing next week.